isn't as bad of a game as people have made it out to be. If anything, it's a solid and fine way to end the trilogy. Spyro, you really are one bad dragon. And Spyro 3 gets my seal of approval. Oh! Hey guys! I didn't see you come in. You're a bit early. The Spyro 3 video isn't ready yet. In fact, I just finished the script. It won't take six months this time, I promise. In fact, I just gotta record the audio, do some editing, but the new trailer for The Lion King dropped and I gotta watch that. Everything the king touches rises one day. Oh man, this looks great. I'm fucking excited. The Lion King was one of my favorite movies when I was a little robot and... Wait a sec. Oh no. Not him. Anyone but him. It can't be! I killed you with my own two hands and a very convenient cannon for Marvel vs. Capcom 2. You cannot kill what is not truly alive, wrought from cloth and the fear of the truth. The mere mention of my name has brought me back from the darkness. And now, I am here too. What are you doing? Eh? I I'm ordering a pizza. You dare mock me by ordering delicious meats and cheeses. I mean, you're not actually gonna do anything. What? This is a YouTube game review show. You're the silly villain gimmick. People do this all the time. You'll spout some nonsense, and I'll be all, Oh no, my balls have been turned into snakes! And you'll be all, Now you have to play my game to reverse the curse! Ha ha ha! And then at the end of everything, there'll be a plot twist where I don't actually have balls because I'm a robot or something. Did you just admit you don't have balls? Anything for the plot, baby. And pizza is how you're going to deal with this. What? No, no. I'm just going to be hungry after I play your stupid-ass game. Glover for PS1 sucks, man. Now, here's where I might get a bit of flack. See, the N64 version of Glover, not a bad game. Decent to look at, controls feel alright, the cutscenes are funny for the right reasons, and all in all, it's solid. Not a must-own, but more of a, eh, you could definitely have this and feel okay about it. But the PS1 version? My god, what the fuck happened? Developed by Atari Interactive and released for the PlayStation in 1999, Glover sees the player playing as a magical glove, tasked with gathering the lost crystals for his wizard pal. But oh no, the other glove fell into the potion and is now an evil glove. It's... It's fucking stupid. Also, I just noticed the wizard is totally T-posing, which confirms my theory that to enact magic spells, the optimal position is T-posing. You researched this? No, I lied. It's for a joke. What's the joke? This game, that's what. So you start off the game and you're thrust into a hub world where you learn all about your various techniques. Glover himself has a very standard set of moves. Run in, double jump in, a slam move, and POINT AT THE BALL! Now the main gimmick of the game is that you have this ball. And with this ball, you can do ball things. Such as, for instance, example, uh, bouncing? As one would do with the ball. You can also slap the ball at enemies for maximum damage, which is frustratingly hard to control. The real kicker is that the ball has different forms you can change it into, such as bowling ball, ball bearing, the actual crystal itself, which is very fragile, so don't throw any money in, it's broken. Fuck it, it's broken. Fuck! Levels are broken up into different themes, as is the norm with puzzle platformers. You got your aquatic ruins, your volcano, clown level, and these have multiple parts to them. And honestly, they aren't really that bad at all. Some of them even have quirky little set pieces to play around with. In the clown world, which will now be referred to as Clo World, you can play a stupid slot machine, a fucked up crane game, and remember that the playing as a glove is not as fun as it sounds, it doesn't even sound that fun to begin with. Do you have something against gloves? Not really, I mean, I wear gloves. At least, I think I do. What are my hands? Have you ever tried taking them off? What if, what if they're actually my hands? Don't you want to find out? I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Speaking of hands, the controls when using the ball are fucking gross. And the problem with that is you're going to be using the ball 99% of the time since you have to carry the ball all the way to the end of each world. See, in other games where you have to do something like this, you'd usually have other methods of dealing with enemies. Or maybe it's part of a challenge separate from the main game itself. But Glover tries to build around the idea of utilizing the ball to facilitate movement options. And I'm not totally opposed to the idea. In fact, I think it's pretty novel considering the era when this game came out. Having the ball allows you to bounce it like I said earlier, which can be used to cross gaps and whatnot. It's got interesting movement mechanics. At least, it would if it would feel like it was designed for that, if Glover himself didn't already have a second double jump already. So it's less about having those movement options, and more just having a secondary moveset for moving the ball from point A to point B. You're not even really saving the world from evil, you're a fucking delivery boy. Glove. 
boy glove. I think that's a euphemism for a condom. Which is what the designer should have worn when they were making this game! Fuck, that joke didn't even make any sense. See, controlling Glover by himself feels pretty good. In fact, there are some platforming bits here where you don't need to take the ball with you, and I wouldn't be opposed to playing an entire game designed strictly around this moveset, even with the limited combat options. Imagine if just having the ball, you could grab enemies, throttle them, or pick up other things and throw them back, or shoot things with magic as a finger gun since you're a magic glove. I understand what the developers were trying to do, and I admire them for sticking to their guns, but this doesn't work very well. So like, are you actually Grenade Man? What? Why do you care? Well, I mean, you look like Grenade Man from Mega Man 8, and it's even part of your name, but you're a YouTuber. Technical term is a copyright. What's a copyright? A series of robots designed after various Mega Man bosses with German surnames created to review video games and analyze useful combat and social data from them in an attempt to... Well, you don't need to know that part. I mean it just seems to me that if you're gonna create a persona to review games on YouTube, you wouldn't use something that's already copyrighted. It just seems like a dumb move. Well, making a game about a glove seems like a dumb move to me, but we all make mistakes, don't we? I'm, I'm sorry. No, no, uh, it's my fault. I've been stressed lately. I just, I, and you know, I don't really want to do this because I, I really fucking hate your game. But I gotta say, the music, pretty fucking good. I used to hum the main theme of the game all the time when I was a kid. It's so damn catchy. And these beats really help bring to life these levels, even if the draw distance is fucking atrocious. I mean, Spyro had already come out at this point. Wasn't the tech that they used to make those big-ass levels readily known, if not implemented by other games at that point? Again, some of these tunes are real toe-tappers, if not jams that add a nice ambience to the levels themselves. Oh, I forgot to mention, this game has power-ups. I can't figure out the usefulness of like half of them, but they're there. There's one that makes Glover super big, which allows him to push stuff. But the power-up is never super far from anything that needs pushing, so it's not as if it's being able to do so as a reward for carrying the power-up for a long time. It just feels like an unnecessary step between you and the action you want to complete. The only really good one is a helicopter, and even then it's only used like twice. On top of that, the power-ups all seem to have different timers. I don't mean like two different power-ups have two different time limits, that would make sense, but sometimes one power-up will have a longer or shorter time usage than another power-up of the same power-up. I can't understand this lack of consistency, it goes against one of the core adages of game design, consistent rules. And what, this is for- what is this for? What does this even do? Can someone, ex can someone explain to me the benefit of having this big ball? Bosses. Bosses are... varied. First boss can go suck a big pile of dicks. All you gotta do is smack the ball into him five times and ground pound the last two hit points. The second boss gets points for making me laugh because it's thematically appropriate. Third boss? Pretty lame. Fourth boss isn't even a fight, it's just running from him and getting to the end. The fifth boss isn't even worth mentioning, but the final boss? Let's have a little chat about the final boss. One of the biggest mistakes you can make when designing a game is having a very important climactic part of the game shift into another style of gameplay entirely without any warning to the player. This can work in some games where you've had a similar situation already and are wary of how to handle it, and that's okay, it's almost like a nice surprise, like the Warthog section at the end of the first Halo. However, look at this shit. The entire control scheme has changed to something completely different. A first-person turret defense where you have to defend against missiles and shoot balls at the bad guy? Look at this mess! Look at how bad the controls are here! And I- am I damaging him? Oh, I guess I did hurt him, I didn't even notice, I just kept firing and oh, he's exploding again? Oh good, that's just why I'm What the fuck is this final boss?! Game design, 1-0-fucking-1. The final boss should be a cumulative test of all the abilities you've learned over the entirety of your experience of playing the game. Excellent final bosses include, and are not limited to, Ganon from Ocarina of Time, Virgil and Devil May Cry 3, FUCKING SIGMA! GOD DAMN SIGMA! But do you see this? I didn't even think this was gonna be the final boss because he's so dumb and poorly designed, I thought it was just a tease, what the fuck? I feel like you've got some repressed issues when it comes to cursing and final bosses. I. Hate. Terrible. Final. Bosses. It's the easiest thing to make your game end with a bang, how the fuck? Can someone fuck this up so badly? But okay, let's take it back for a sec. Let's just talk about it overall now. This game sucks. At least this version sucks. I don't know about the N64 version, so we're not gonna worry about that, but this version? Holy shit! If I ever play this game again, it'll be too soon. I can see a lot of potential with this game, and I really wish it was better than it was. As it stands, it's just a terrible piece of garbage. Are they doing the ending of Spyro? When are they going to show the credits over a level? When is it going to go to the next? Is it just... It's just going to be the castle. It's just the castle. Okay. That's... That's... That, 
Oh, that's cheeky. That's real cheeky. Wait, cheat codes? Oh, fuck, that's pretty cool, actually. I, you know, I'll give you points for they get You get seven and a half points for that. Cheat codes are always fun, but no, this game still sucks. So the review's over? Yay. That was oddly short. Uh-huh. I mean, you didn't really talk much about it. I don't like talking about stuff I don't like. So are we gonna fight now? Nope. Well, I'm not leaving until we fight. Is that the Infinity Gauntlet? Yeah. How and why do you have that? Well, everyone knows that the only way to beat a glove is with another glove. No one. Literally no one says that. Well, I do, so hasta la vista, Mr. Glavista. Mr. Nade. I feel... Pretty good. Well, now that that's finished, I'm gonna go back to work on Spyro 3. That was a really weird diversion. Uh, uh, thank you all. Thank you, America. God bless us. Everyone.